Okay, hello and welcome to the New York City Category Theory Seminar. This is our first talk for the spring 2021. And Jason Parker uh, of uh, Manitoba, he's gonna talk about isotopic groups of quasi-equational theories. But start off, Jason, tell us something about you, where you did your undergraduate, where you, where you, where you are now, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, sure, sure, sounds good. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I'm Jason Parker. Um, just a, an FYI, uh, I do sometimes stutter, so you hear me stuttering, uh, the, 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 that is totally uh, normal. But yeah, so um, I, I did my doctorate at the University of Ottawa, uh, so I graduated uh, this past October. Uh, prior to that, I was um, a master's student at uh, Carnegie Mellon in the States, uh, working with uh, Steve Audi. Um, and then prior to that, I did my undergrad at Queen's University uh, in, uh, in Kingston of Canada. And yeah, so, uh, so currently I'm a postdoc uh, with Rory Lucician Wright at Brandon University in Manitoba, Canada. Uh, so yeah, I guess uh, the, the, that is some background on me. Um, yeah, so this uh, talk is based on my, um, my uh, doctoral you. thesis. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, my thesis, my the, the thesis was what was called uh, isotropy groups of quasi equational theories. Uh, so that, uh, this talk is based on that. Um, so I guess I'll start. Uh, okay. Yeah. So just a few uh, kind of first introductory points. Um, so basically, isotropy is a um, a somewhat new mathematical phenomenon that has manifestations in category theory, uh, algebra, and universal algebra, and theoretical co computer science. So we'll see that isotropy basically encodes a generalized notion of co conjugation or inner automorphism for many uh, prominent categories in mathematics and especially uh, algebra, I would say. So to motivate this phenomenon. Um, so first, uh, in group theory, recall that an automorphism uh, alpha of a group G is called inner. If there is an element S in G that basically induces alpha by conjugation, so meaning that um, alpha of any element G in the group is S times G times S inverse. So basically alpha conjugates any element in the group by this uh, conjugating element S. Now, it actually turns out that the inner automorphisms of a group uh, defined by conjugation in this sense can be characterized without mentioning conjugation or group elements uh, at all. So how can we see this? So first, uh, first observe that if alpha is any inner automorphism of a group G induced by, say, a conjugating element S in G, then for any group homomorphism F going from G to some other group H, I can push forward alpha along F to define an inner automorphism of the codomain of F, so uh, on H, uh, by conjugation with the element F of S in H. So I can push forward the conjugating element S along F into H, and then define the corresponding inner automorphism of H uh, in terms of this conjugating element f of s. So therefore, uh, in particular, um, alpha sub id g will just be alpha. So, so yeah, so then in this way, I obtain a family of automorphisms of groups. So for each uh, group morphism f going out of g, I get an inner automorphism of the codomain of f in, uh, in this way. And I get, therefore, a family of group automorphisms uh, indexed over the group morphisms going out of G. Now, this family is coherent in the sense that, that it satisfies the f f following naturality property. So for any, uh, say, group morphism F from G to G prime, F prime from G prime to G prime prime, uh, the following diagram will commute. So we'll have uh, alpha F, uh, the inner automorphism of G prime induced by F on the top, alpha sub F prime after F, the inner automorphism of G prime prime <clears throat> induced by F prime after F on the bottom uh, of G of, yeah. And then on the right, we have F prime. Uh, so F prime after alpha F 
will equal uh, alpha sub f prime after f after f prime. So it's easy to check that um, uh, that the family alpha f uh, obtained in this way does indeed satisfy this coherence or naturality property. Okay, so, so just to summarize this slide, if we have any inner automorphism alpha of a group G uh, induced by a conjugating element S in the group, then for any group morphism out of G, I can define an inner automorphism of the codomain of F uh, by, by uh, defining it to be the inner automorphism induced by the image of the conjugating element. And then all of the automorphisms so defined uh, are then coherent with each other in this uh, sense. <clears throat> I, want, I, want, I just want to say, I, want, I, I didn't understand this. So the automorphism of G is kind of, kind of like, the, like the primary one, the main one, and, yeah. and, and all, it induces automorphism, it's like an absolute automorphism, inner automorphism, yeah, okay. and, it, and it induces it in any, for any function going out of G. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, uh, yes, yeah. so, um, so for, uh, so for um, any group morphism going out of G, I get an induced inner automorphism of the codomain of that morphism, yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so yeah, so we saw that uh, if we start with an inner automorphism of a group G, then it induces uh, a family of automorphisms of groups indexed by the group morphisms going out of G. Now, let's so now um, if we have uh, just an arbitrary family of automorphisms of groups indexed by um, group morphisms going out of G that aren't, uh, that are not a priori inner and that have the above naturality property, then we'll call this an extended inner automorphism of G. So here I'm not assuming that, um, the, that the automorphisms in an extended inner automorphism are a priori inner. I'm just saying that an extended inner automorphism of G is and is an arbitrary family of group automorphisms indexed by the group morphisms going out of G on the codomains of those maps that are coherent with each other. Uh, so yeah, so the so calling these things extended inner automorphisms uh, that is basically motivated by the following result of George Bergman. So with George Bergman in this paper, uh, which is called um, an inner automorphism is just an inner automorphism, but an, inner, but an inner endomorphism can be something strange. Uh, so in this paper, he proves the following results. So we have an automorphism alpha of a group G. An alpha is an inner automorphism. So it's induced by a conjugating uh, element. If and only if there is an extended inner automorphism uh, whose component at the identity on G is alpha. <clears throat> so basically, so we saw on the previous slide that if alpha is inner, then alpha induces an extended inner automorphism. So i.e. I can push alpha forward along any uh, group morphism out of G, and then the resulting family of automorphisms of groups is uh, co coherent. But the converse is actually true as well. So if we start off with just an arbitrary family of automorphisms of groups, uh, one for each group morphism out of the starting group G and on, on the codomain of that morphism uh, that are natural or coherent, then in fact, this, uh, this family is induced by an inner automorphism of the starting group G. So basically, this is saying that, um, yeah, so basically this gives a completely element-free or categorical characterization of it, it, inner automorphisms of groups. So they're exactly those group automorphisms that are coherently extendable along morphisms out of the domain. So yeah, because basically, um, uh, if there is an extended inner automorphism, alpha f sub f, whose component at the identity on G is alpha, 
that basically means that I can push forward alpha along any group morphism out of G. So this theorem then says that alpha is an inner automorphism in the sense of conjugation if and only if it can be coherently pushed forward along any group morphism out of G. Oops, okay. So hopefully uh, um, that makes some sense. Um, okay, so next. It, it has a feel of your NATO lemma somehow. Yeah, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it does. Um, uh, yeah, it does seem similar to that. I, I don't really know uh, kind of, or I don't really know how to say um, exactly how they are connected if they are, but yeah, but um, it is quite similar to it. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Um, okay, so what is this, uh, this uh, isotropy business? Um, so we have a functor Z from group to group that sends any group G to its group of extended inner automorphisms. So uh, the set of extended inner automorphisms of a group has a group structure um, that's not hard to check. And also Z is, is, a, is a functorial. So this is interesting because, um, uh, so in general, if you take a category C and you assign to each object of the category its automorphism group in the category. That is not, in general, functorial unless the category uh, is a groupoid. But in this context, um, uh, assigning to any object of the category of groups its group of extended inner automorphisms, that is functorial. Um, so I'll come back to this point also on the next slide, I think, too. Yeah, so we will refer to this Z as the covariant isotropy group functor of the category group. So it sends each group to its group of extended inner automorphisms. So yeah, in fact, any category C has a covariant isotropy group functor, uh, ZC, from C to group, that sends each object of C to its group of extended inner automorphisms. So i.e. families of automorphisms, uh, 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 indexed over the arrows out of C, and you have an automorphism of the codomain of each such arrow, and these automorphisms are uh, are coherent or are natural. So, more categorically speaking, these are actually the same thing as natural automorphisms of the projection fun functor from C slice the category C to the category C. So, trying to un unpack this in that sense. Um, so if you have any object of C slice the category C, that's an arrow from C to some object D. And then uh, the natural automorphism of this projection functor will, will return an automorphism of D. And then all of those automorphisms uh, are compatible or are coherent in a certain sense. Yeah, so, there, so therefore an extended inner automorphism of an object C of an arbitrary category C is just a natural automorphism of this projection functor uh, from the slice category under C to the category C. And again, so to, um, to uh, go back to my first point, um, or uh, um, my point on the, on, on the bullet above, so if you assign to, so we take any category C and you assign to uh, each object its automorphism group, that process is not uh, functorial unless C is a groupoid. But the process of assigning to each object of C its group of extended inner automorphisms, that is uh, functorial as is not hard to show. Um, okay. Yes, so we can also turn Bergman's characterization of inner automorphisms in group into a definition of inner automorphisms in an arbitrary category C. So if we have an object C in, the, in a category C, we can define an automorphism alpha of C to be inner if there is an extended inner automorphism or a natural automorphism of the projection functor from C or from the slice category under C to the category, 
uh, whose component at the identity on C is alpha. So basically, uh, this is saying that alpha is inner if it can be coherently extended or pushed forward along any arrow out of C in the category. So this basically turns Bergman's results for groups into a definition in an arbitrary category where there, where there may not be um, a notion of conjugation um, as there is in the category of groups. So now group is the category of set-based models of an equational or algebraic theory, uh, namely the theory T subgroup of groups. So group is just T group mod, the, the category of models of T group. Um, so basically what we will do is we will ge ge generalize ideas from the proof of this result of Bergman to give a logical or a syntactic characterization of the inner and extended inner automorphisms of T mod. So in other words of the covariant isotropy group functor of T mod for any so-called quasi -e -e equational theory T. Okay, so just to uh, to define uh, yeah, those. You're oh, gonna, sure. okay, no, yeah. you're going to define, okay, fine. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, um, so what are these theories? Uh, so they're also known in the literature as partial Horn theories in the sense of um, Palmgren and and Vickers, and uh, essentially algebraic theories in the sense of uh, Peter, Peter Fried. Fried. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Cartesian theories in the sense of Johnstone and uh, for finite limit theories in the sense of, uh, I think, Costa. Yeah. Okay, so first we need the notion of a signature sigma. So this has a set of sorts and a set of uh, typed function or uh, operations so, so symbols. So for example, the signature for groups has one sort, say X, and three for function symbols for product, which is binary, of course. Uh, inverse, which is unary, and a constant for the unit element of the group. Uh, the signature for the theory of categories, which, as we'll see, is a quasi-equational theory, has two sorts uh, over objects, A for uh, arrows, and four functions so symbols, uh, DOM and COD for domain and codomain, uh, ID for the identity arrows, and uh, composition, which, uh, as we'll see, is only partially defined. Uh, Okay, so then we can form the set of terms over a given signature from variables and function symbols, as is uh, standard, um, and the set of Horn formulas, which are f f f finite conjunctions of equations between terms. Um, and then, by definition, a quasi-equational theory is a set of uh, implications called the axioms uh, of the form phi implies psi, where phi and psi are horn formulas over the given signature. <clears throat> and so uh, this, this uh, terminology comes from uh, the, the paper by Palmgren and um, Vickers called uh, Partial Horn Logic and C Cartesian Categories. So, uh, the, so yeah, so um, kind of the important thing here is that um, the operation symbols in a quasi-equational theory are only required to be partially defined. Um, so, in, in other words, the underlying logic of these theories, which, uh, which one calls partial horn logic, has the property that um, equality is not assumed to be reflexive uh, in general. So, um, yeah, so it, it, it is uh, potentially a non-trivial fact that a given theory proves that a term is defined. So if T is a term, we'll write T down arrow to mean T equals T. And that basically stands for, or means that T is defined. <clears throat> uh, yes. Okay. So yeah, so, so, so some examples of quasi-equational theories are the following. Um, so any, any uh, single sorted uh, usual uh, algebraic theory in the sense of classical universal algebra. So whose axioms all have the form top implies psi, where top is the empty co conjunction uh, and, and psi is a, a single equation. So for example, the theories of sets, semi-groups, uh, monoids and commutative monoids, groups and abelian groups, rings with unit, etc. 
just to give an example of how um, one might axiomatize uh, such a theory in, in these terms. So that the theory of groups has, would have the following axioms. So this axiom says that all the operations are total uh, as it is the case in any standard group. Um, this one says that the product is associative. Uh, and then these last two say that the unit element or the, the, the constant and the inverse operation act as we uh, expect them to. Okay, so some less uh, kind of trivial examples or, or, or less um, standard examples. So the, th th the theories of categories, um, groupoids, uh, categories with a fixed or chosen terminal object and Cartesian, i.e. finitely complete categories can all be given quasi-equational axiomatizations. <clears throat> So for instance, um, two of the axioms for the theory of categories are the following. So these uh, two axioms um, uh, characterize uh, when and only when a composite arrow term is defined. So of course, in a category in general, uh, composition is not a total operation. It's only defined on the composable pairs of arrows. So we say that um, for uh, two the, the variables f and g of type arrow, uh, the term g after f is defined if and only if uh, g's domain is f's codomain. <clears throat> so also one can axiomatize the theory of strict monomial categories uh, as a quasi-equational theory, as we'll see in or as we'll see later on. Um, also, the theory of functors from J to T mod for any small category J and quasi-equational theory T can be axiomatized uh, as a quasi-equational th theory. So in particular, the theory of pre-sheaves uh, from J to set uh, has a quasi-equational axiomatization. Uh, again, we'll come back to this specific example uh, later on. <clears throat> okay. So back to kind of the main thrust of the talk. So, right, so we want, so we will be uh, using kind of um, ideas from the proof of Bergman's theorem to characterize the covariant isotropy group functor of the category of models of any of these quasi-equational theories. Um, so basically we'll be characterizing the inner and the extended inner automorphisms of T mod for any quasi-equational theory T. <clears throat> okay, so in the proof of Bergman's theorem, uh, so Bergman considers a, so, uh, so recall that um, in this theorem, Bergman is showing that um, uh, an automorphism of a group is inner if and only if it can be coherently extended along any group morphism out of the group. <clears throat> so to prove this, or to, to, to prove the non-trivial direction, uh, he says, so consider um, uh, any group G and an automorphism of G that can be coherently extended along morphisms out of G. And consider G bracket X, which is obtained from G by freely adjoining a new indeterminate element X to G. <clears throat> so the elements of G bracket X can be re regarded as reduced group words in X and elements or constants from the group G. <clears throat> now the underlying set, so the set of these reduced words can be given a substitution monoid structure in fact. So to do this, if we have any W1 and W2, which are reduced group words of this kind, then I can define a product of them by substitution. So I can substitute W2 for X and W1 and then the unit of this monoid structure is of course just X itself. <clears throat> okay, so now if we have uh, such a reduced word, then I'm going to define what it means for W to commute generically with the group operations. So this will be true if W s s s satisfies the following three conditions. So if we adjoin two new uh, indeterminate elements, x1 and x2 to g, and I consider the word w with 
x1 times x2 replacing x, then that then that word has to reduce to w with x1 for x times w with x2 for x. If I just take uh, g with one in determinant x adjoint, and I consider w uh, with, or sorry, um, if I take the inverse of w, then, th then that must reduce to w with x inverse replacing x. And finally, if I substitute the unit element e for x in w, that must reduce to e. So if all of these three things are true for w, then w commutes generically with the group operations by definition. So an example of this is the following. So if we take any element g in the group, then uh, as long as g is not the unit, then the word gx g inverse is a reduced word and it will commute generically with the group operations. So why is this? <clears throat> so if I uh, take this word and substitute x1 for x, and then multiply it by the word with x2 replacing x, so I have gx1 g inverse times gx2 g inverse, and then if I reduce that word, <clears throat> I'll first get, well then I will obviously get gx1 x2 g inverse. So this shows that g x g inverse commutes generically with the product operation. Um, <clears throat> okay, if I take the inverse of this word and reduce it, I'll first get g inverse inverse, x inverse g inverse, and then uh, g x inverse g inverse. So this word g x g inverse will commute uh, generically with the inverse operation as well. And for finally, if I substitute e for x and reduce, I'll get e. So gx g inverse also commutes in a generic sense with the unit uh, element of the group. <clears throat> so this word gx g inverse does commute generically with the group operations uh, in the sense I just uh, did defined. Okay. So let Z of G, as before, be the group of extended inner automorphisms of G. And let inv of G bracket X be the subgroup of invertible elements of the substitution monoid on G bracket X. So all the substitutionally invertible reduced words in G bracket X. Uh, for example, uh, any word as above, G X G inverse is substitutionally invertible with inverse g inverse xg, because if you substitute g inverse xg for x in g x g inverse and reduce, you will get x back and conversely as well. Okay, so the proof of Bergman's theorem actually shows that the group Z of g of extended inner automorphisms of g is isomorphic to the subgroup of inv of g bracket x of all the words that commute generically with the group operations. So just to repeat that, so the, the group Z of G, which is uh, the, group, the group of extended inner automorphisms of G, also called the covariant isotropy group of G, that group is isomorphic to the subgroup of, the, of, of all of the substitutionally invertible reduced words that commute generically with the group operations. So basically this idea will be extending to um, the models of any quasi e e equational theory. <clears throat> okay, so I'll fix a quasi equational theory T over some signature sigma and let T mod be its category of set based models. Um, I will usually assume in this talk that T is single sorted, but that, but that assumption is not at all necessary. Um, so yeah. And, and in fact, um, I, I won't always assume that, but um, I will occasionally for simplicity. Um, okay. So we'll give a logical or syntactic characterization of the covariant isotropy group functor of T mod. So recall that ZT sends any model M to its group of extended inner automorphisms. So an extended inner automorphism of a T model M is a family of automorphisms indexed over the morphisms out of M 
and one automorphism for each, or on the codomain of each such morphism out of M that are coherent in a certain sense. So fix a model M of T. Uh, as for groups, we can construct a T model M bracket X, which is the co-product of M with the free T model on one ge generator X. So basically this is the model obtained from M by freely adjoining a new object. <clears throat> and the elements of this uh, T model can be regarded as congruence classes of terms uh, over X and uh, which is a constant or a, a, a fresh constant and elements of or, uh, and constants from the model. <clears throat> And then one can endow the underlying set of this T model with a substitution monoid structure and the same way as for groups. So the product is defined by a substitution into this uh, indeterminate element or constant X and the unit is just X itself. <clears throat> okay, so then the, the first main result uh, that I proved in my th thesis is the following. So if we take any quasi-equational theory uh, over a signature sigma, which is, which is just uh, single sorted for simplicity, but, um, but uh, that's not at all essential. Um, <clears throat> then for any model M of T, it's covariant isotropy group, i.e. it's group of extended inner automorphisms is isomorphic to the group of invertible elements uh, T, or rather the, the congruence class of T, of the substitution monoid on M bracket X that commute generically with the function symbols of sigma in the following sense. So if we take any N airy function symbol F of the signature, then this equality holds in M with uh, N new, new elements X1 through XN adjoined. So this equality says the following. So um, if we take the, the function symbol F and apply it to these N new objects and then substitute that term for X in T. Oh, I have a question maybe or something. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. So I will answer this question in a sec, yeah. So um, yeah, so then, and then that must equal F with uh, T or F applied to T uh, n times with with um, uh, the or with sorry so f applied to t with x one for x and t with x n for x so basically this uh, this equality expresses that basically um, t commutes in a generic sense with the function symbol f so basically t preserves a generic application of f <clears throat> okay so just, so just to oh I think I have one more line there uh, yeah. So just to uh, kind of repeat this result. So the covariant isotropy group of M or its group of extended inner automorphisms is isomorphic to the group of all the substitutionally invertible uh, elements of M bracket X that commute generically with the operations of the theory. Yeah, so then I got a question uh, in the chat, which was about, um, so if T is not single sorted. Yeah, so if T uh, is, not, uh, is not single sorted, uh, then what you do is you, so basically you can show uh, that, that the covariant activity group of M is isomorphic to uh, the group of, yeah, so basically you have to adjoin for each sort um, so yeah, so so for each sort, you would join an indeterminate of that sort uh, to M, and then you show that uh, ZT of M is isomorphic to the subgroup of the product of all of those um, groups, basically. So, so you show that um, uh, that any element of ZT of M is basically a a a, a, a sort a sort sorry, uh, it's a sort indexed family of elements of M with the appropriate uh, in determinants of sorts adjoined that commute generically with the operations of a theory uh, in a more extended sense. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's not um, anything much more complex in the 
multi-sorted case, uh, but uh, it is a bit more uh, involved. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, so let's go ahead. Um, yeah. Okay. So this this uh, theorem has the consequence that so an automorphism alpha of a T model M is inner. So i.e. It, it can be coherently extended along any morphism out of M if and only if there is some uh, term of this kind. So some substitutionally invertible term that commutes generically with the operations of the theory that induces alpha in the sense that uh, alpha of any element M in the model is equal to uh, the evaluation of T with M replacing X. So I take the term T, I substitute the constant M for X and I evaluate that term. I get an, 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 I get an element of M and that is equal to alpha of M. <clears throat> so basically the inner automorphisms of M can be characterized in this kind of logical or syntactic way. So therefore, Bergman's uh, syntactic or logical characterization of the inner and extended inner automorphisms of groups uh, extends to the category T mod of models of any quasi-equational theory T whatsoever. <clears throat> okay, so I'll just, I'll show some examples of this result or some uh, applications rather. <clears throat> what time is it? Uh, okay, I will. Okay, so if T is the, uh, the, the theory of sets, so it has uh, one sort, no axioms, and no function symbols, uh, then T has perhaps unsurprisingly a uh, trivial isotropy group functor. So um, it, if I say that, I, uh, sorry, so um, if I say that a theory uh, has trivial uh, or non trivial isotropy group, I mean that um, uh, its covariant isotropy group functor is constant or not constant respectively on the trivial group. <clears throat> so T has trivial isotropy group, i.e. the covariant isotropy group functor of T is constant on the tri trivial group. So for any set S, uh, its covariant isotropy group is the trivial group. Um, <clears throat> so the only inner automorphism of a set is the identity function. <clears throat> Now, if T is the, the, the theory of groups, then Bergman basically proved that for any group G, its covariant isotropy group is isomorphic to the group of all reduced words of the, this form. And this itself is isomorphic to the group uh, G. <clears throat> so it's interesting that, um, uh, so while the group of inner automorphisms of a group is not in general isomorphic to the group, the group of extended inner automorphisms of a group is isomorphic to it. If T is the th theory of monoids, then for any monoid M, uh, its covariant isotropy group is isomorphic to the group of all the reduced words of this form with M an invertible element. And this in turn is isomorphic to the group of invertible elements of the monoid M. <clears throat> If T is the theory of abelian groups, then for any abelian group G, its covariant isotropy group is just the two element group. So basically this says that um, the only uh, inner automorphisms of a group are the identity morphism and the inverse morphism. If T is the theory of commutative monoids or commutative unital rings, then uh, T has trivial isotropy group. So i.e. Um, uh, every uh, commutative monoid or commutative unital ring has trivial isotropy group. If T is the theory of not necessarily commutative unital rings, um, then for any such ring R, uh, its covariant isotropy group is isomorphic to all of the uh, words of this form, R X R inverse for R a unit in the ring. And this in turn is isomorphic to the group of e units of the ring R. And the same thing actually holds as well for the theory of R modules over a commutative ring R as well. 
if T is the theory of categories, uh, groupoids, or categories with a, a uh, fixed terminal object or a chosen terminal object, then it's uh, then it has trivial isotropy group, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, but in contrast to that, <clears throat> if T is the theory of strict monoidal categories, then T has non-trivial isotopy group. So for any strict monoidal category C, uh, its covariant isotopy group is isomorphic to the group of invertible elements of its object monoid. <clears throat> so this has the consequence that if we have any strict monoidal automorphism F, of a strict monoidal category C, then F is inner, i.e. F can be extended along any uh, strict monoidal functor out of C, if and only if there is some invertible object that uh, induces F by conjugation, in the sense that F sends any object A to C tensor A tensor C inverse and, <clears throat> and acts uh, in a similar way on arrows. Yeah, so to repeat that, so a strict monoidal automorphism of a strict monoidal category is inner uh, if and only if it is induced by conjugation uh, by an invertible object in this sense. <clears throat> okay, so to, to uh, discuss the last big example, so we can also characterize the covariant isotropy groups of uh, functor categories the form t mod to the j for a quasi-equational theory t and a small index uh, or diagram category j. <clears throat> so in particular, we'll be able to characterize the covariant isotropy group functors of pre-sheaved categories. So fix a quasi-equational theory t, uh, then given a small category j, we can define a quasi-equational theory t to the j whose models are exactly the functors from J to T mod. So uh, the category of models of T, of T to the J is isomorphic to the functor category T mod to the J. So I then proved the following results. Um, so let T be a theory, uh, which, which doesn't have to be single sorted, but um, does have to satisfy a few small assumptions, which thankfully, are satisfied by all the example theories I showed before. Uh, and let J be a small category. Uh, then let ought of id J be the, the group of natural automorphisms of id J, which we may also call the global isotropy group of J. Uh, <clears throat> so then for any functor F from J to T mod, i.e. for any model of the theory T to the J, its covariant isotropy group so its group of extended inner automorphisms in T mod to the J is isomorphic to this group here. So this is a product group. So the left-hand factor is the limit group of the functor ZT after F, which goes from J to T mod to group. And then we take uh, the right-hand factor being this, uh, this global isotropy group of J. So basically this expresses the idea or the, the fact that um, the covariant isotropy group of, of uh, T mod to the J incorporates in some sense the global isotropy of the index category J as well as the uh, covariant isotropy of T mod. <clears throat> So if, if T is the theory of sets, then for any functor from J to set, which is uh, T mod for T, the theory of sets. Um, so its covariant isotropy group is just the, the uh, global isotropy group of J, because uh, as I mentioned uh, before, so the theory of sets has trivial isotropy. And so the functor ZT after F is constant on the trivial group. So its limit is the trivial group. So that left-hand factor falls out. So if we had a functor F from J to set and an automorphism, uh, so a, a natural automorphism alpha of F, then alpha is inner i.e. alpha can be extended along any natural transformation out of F if and only if it is induced by some natural automorphism psi of id j. 
in the sense that uh, alpha sub or alpha's component at any object k of j is f of psi k, which is, a, which is an automorphism of f of k. So alpha is inner uh, if and only if it's induced by some natural automorphism of id j. <clears throat> So this, so as a result, uh, in fact, the covariant isotropic group functor of set J is actually constant on the global isotropic group of J. This is uh, interesting because um, the contravariant isotropic group functor of set J uh, is not at all constant. Or sorry, um, yeah. Uh, so this is kind of a, in a dramatic contrast to, to that situation. Um, I'm not quite sure why that, that is yet, but um, that will be discussed uh, in a paper to come. Uh, okay, so some further consequences of that. So for any group G, the covariant isotropic group functor uh, of set to the G, the category of G sets, is constant on the center of the group G. This is because um, if we regard uh, G as a one object groupoid, then the natural, then the uh, automorphism group of the identity functor on G as a category uh, is easily seen to be isomorphic to the center of G. Uh, more generally for any monoid M, the covariant isotropic group functor of set to the M, the category of M sets, is constant on the group of invertible elements of the center of M for similar reasons as for the, the case of uh, G sets. <clears throat> okay, so I will basically conclude with some connections to topos theory of this uh, work. So if T is a quasi equational theory, then T has what's called a classifying topos B of T. So that is just a co-complete topos that has a universal model of T and it classifies all topos, the, the theoretic models of T. So all models of T in all toposes, <clears throat> as shown, uh, say in the books by um, MacLean, Mordike or uh, uh, Johnstone. Now it's been shown that any group the topos E has a canonical internal group object called the isotropy group of the topos. Uh, which basically acts canonically on every object of the topos and formally ge generalizes the notion of conjugation. This is shown in the paper by um, uh, Fung, Kostra, and Steinberg. <clears throat> so basically, um, the connection of this to uh, the work in this talk is that the covariant isotropy group of a quasi-equational theory is essentially uh, the internal isotropy group object of the classifying topos of T. So basically by characterizing um, the covariant isotropy groups of quasi-equational theories, we've been contributing to the larger project of characterizing the uh, internal isotropy groups of Roten deep toposes. <clears throat> Okay, so just to conclude and summarize. Um, so we saw that Bergman characterized the inner automorphisms of groups as exactly those automorphisms that can be coherently extended or pushed forward along any group morphism out of the group. And then we use this, this uh, purely categorical uh, formulation or uh, characterization to define inner automorphisms in arbitrary categories, which obviously may lack a notion of conjugation. <clears throat> and then we extended uh, Bergman's somewhat syntactic or logical characterization of the inner and extended inner automorphisms of groups, i.e. of the covariant isotropy group of the category group to the category or uh, yeah, to the covariant isotropy group functor of T mod for any quasi equational theory T. So using this, we then uh, obtained concrete explicit descriptions of the inner and extended inner uh, uh, automorphisms of many different categories. Um, so lots of categories of algebras, uh, the category of categories and strict monodal categories, as well as certain functor categories, including pre-sheaf categories. <clears throat> 
And as I said, uh, this work also represents a contribution to the more general project of characterizing the internal uh, isotropy group objects of Groton D Tuttoposis. <clears throat> okay. Yes, yeah, so I'll just uh, briefly discuss um, a few uh, uh, next steps that I am considering. Um, so if we have, say, two uh, theories, uh, two quasi-equational theories, T1 and T2, then um, one question, one open question, is to characterize the covariant isotropy group functor of the category of models of T1 in the category T2 mod. So this category is actually uh, isomorphic to the category of models for quasi-equational theory called the tensor product of T1 and T2. So yeah, so if this is possible, then this would subsume the examples of strict monoidal categories and functor categories uh, because um, uh, these, these theories are both examples of tensor product theories. Uh, so basically a strict monoidal category is of course um, a monoid object in CAT and a functor or um, an a functor from J to 2T mod is a model of T in the category of pre sheaves uh, from J to set. <clears throat> so also I'm hoping to extend this work to characterize the covariant isotropy group functors of Groton Dictopuses, so i.e. of categories of sheaves um, on a small site. Um, this seems possible because uh, categories of this form are in fact categories of models for uh, a possibly in uh, in finitary quasi-equational theory. So it seems plausible that the methods in this work should extend in some way to that case as well. And then I'm, and then I'm hoping to characterize uh, in a similar kind of logical way the contravariant uh, isotropy group functors of uh, quasi-equational theories and beyond as well. Um, Yep, so thank you very much. That is the end. <laughs> very nice. Um, any questions? I have a question. The, your, sure. your source number four, which made the connection between Topos theory and, and your work. Who, yeah. who, who's that? Who's, who's, oh, there you are. So yeah, four, so there's a paper by, uh, oh, four, yeah, four was it? Yeah. Um, right, right. So. Yeah, so I think this is most or explained most clearly in the book by Johnstone. Yeah, so source four. Yeah, so in volume two, I think. Um, uh, so he shows that the class fang topos of um, any quasi equational theory is the, uh, so it's the pre sheaf category um, on, so who, so yeah, so it's the pre sheaf category on the category of the FP models of T. Uh, so that is the, the uh, category of models of T that have um, a finite presentation. So yeah, so basically, um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so the covariant isotropy group functor of T mod is not quite the, so it's not quite the uh, internal SOB group object of the class of topos, but it basically is, or it, it, it almost is, yeah. I just want one more thing. A nice application for that uh, Kronecker product of theories is uh, figuring out the isotope, isotropy of a double category. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Any more questions? Anyone else? Well, sorry. Uh, so let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it was very nice. Um, thank you. Th and thanks clap again. for everyone. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's very nice. Thank you. Thank you for starting thank us you. up with the boom. It was a very interesting talk. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Tell yeah. everybody next week is uh, Peter Hines is talking on something about operads, so that would be very nice. Sounds You're all welcome good. to come. Great. Anyways. Okay. Jason, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna upload it and send you an email in in an hour or so. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Doke. Take care. Okay. Good night, everybody. You too. Bye now. Andrews, nice to see you. <laughs>